Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I didn't think for you to be proud of her. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. Hi ladies, it's Yanni and I'm back with another video. So before we get into today's video, please give the video a thumbs up. Also turn on your post notifications. I will be uploading Monday through Thursday. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the viral clip from the podcast, The Wind Down with Mary J. Blige that is currently going viral all over social media. And Taraji P. Henson asked the question, where is he? Y'all got any kind of blue thing, some kind of... I honestly don't. You got like somebody. You got a lunch friend, somebody. Mm-mm. Where is he? Before we discussed what was said during this podcast, I just wanted to highlight some things because I did some investigating and I like to do investigations when it comes to what I'm talking about because then I can give a more accurate opinion when it comes to the situation. So I did some digging, I did some investigating. Taraji, she made these comments at a time where she was not happy. Taraji also made these comments before she took her spiritual trip to Bali. So a lot of what she's saying is coming from a pessimistic place, a very dark place. And so a lot of people are weaponizing her vulnerability against her. But I decided let's actually look further into what she's saying, how she came to this conclusion and where she could possibly be today. Let's talk about it. After doing some digging, I noticed that Taraji P. Henson has the same hair that she had in this same interview that she did with Angie Martinez. So I'm going to go ahead and play a clip from the podcast, but I highly recommend that you check out the full episode because it's such an incredible episode. But in this clip, we're going to talk about how Taraji isn't happy and why she feels this way. So let's get into it. I'm about to go to Bali for a month by myself. <gasps> it's my own spiritual journey. I love this for you. Tell me about this. Wait, do you normally do trips by yourself? Never. Okay, can I, I tell you? Tell I think me, I've told please, you this before. Please tell me. I, do, I used to do this every single year. Ooh, ooh. I, I'm, I'm like a year out, I haven't done it, and I'm, my, my spirit is like you gotta yearning do it. for it's it. Time. So I did it first, maybe I'm like four or five years ago, and then I did it every year because when you do it, whenever you're with somebody else, you're on their time and their energy, even if it's a best friend. You're, it's somebody to consider. It's, it's just you somebody gotta consider to consider their problems. You can't really focus on you. Go by yourself. You wake up by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's your own thoughts. It's mm -hmm. your own. It's you force that you just and it, and you could be at peace and mm -hmm. comfort. I love it. I, I haven't never done it a long long time. Normally my trips by myself would be like four days. I'll go mm -hmm. go to Turks, sit in the what by the pool mm -hmm. for four days. Books, pen, right, right, right. You know, just whatever. But Bali sounds. Listen, it's twenty. It's gonna take me twenty four hours to get there. That's by myself. That's not, hey girl, let's get a mimosa. Like that's literally by myself. And then I'm going to be there by myself. It's wait sober. for how long? A month. Wow. Literally. Is this month. because of where you're at and you're trying to like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to find my happiness. And mm -hmm. it's not in my friends. It's not in my mama. It's not in, you know, it's me. It's me. And this is the work I got to do. So that means work gets shut down. Everything. Well, it's, it's the perfect time. I'm the type of person that if I'm not my best, I don't want to be around people. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like God has given me a gift to lift people up. And so if I'm not capable in my own being to do that. I, you get, I, you get low. I, I, don't, I get low. And yeah. I don't want to go because I don't want to bring everybody down. Yeah. I know that about me. Yeah. I know that I'm a energy transfer, like everybody is. But I'm clear. I, I wouldn't do that for you sometimes. As your friend and just watching you and, and fan of your career, you're, mm -hmm. uh, you're always the... Life of the party. Yeah, life I, of the party. Mm -hmm. And... That, it, was, it was my best friend that said it. That's she was like, challenging. Sometimes. It is very challenging. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, I watch you and Taraji, no matter what you're going through, you will go into it. She said, you're such an empath. You're so compassionate that no matter what you're going through, and I know, you'll go into a room and you'll see people not able to pull themselves up and you'll be that person. 
and you'll ignore your whole mm -hmm. what you're going through your mental state you'll ignore it just to lift that room up that's exhausting though right yeah that's tiring and i'm just getting to i this mean it's point. kind but it's like i'm just getting to this mm -hmm. point where it's like it's empty for me now mm -hmm. like i can do it and i i love it i love to make people happy and smile but then what about me because mm -hmm. i go home in the shadows and the four corners of my room who's there to lift me up mm -hmm. mm. so this trip to bali ain't got nothing to do with my friends my mama my dad <laughs> my yeah. kid no this is me what are you hoping to get out of it I'm trying to find that happiness mm. again. The happiness that that was innately in me, you know. Were you like a happy kid, like a happy? I was, yeah. I was the only kid. I, you know, I I could play by myself. I had the most incredible imagination. That's why I'm an actress. That's why I am the actress that I am because I had so much time alone, and I, all I could do was create and pretend mm. that the other person was sitting. I had to pretend you were there. I didn't have, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh. So that's me. That's what I do. And it's in me. Like, I grew up like that. But um, I just hit my glass ceiling, I think. You know, lifting rooms and being the life of the party is like, where is your life? Yeah, but, but what a blessing that you could, number one, be comfortable enough to say that. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you got to be comfortable enough to tell your whole team and everybody involved with you, like, I'm going away for a month and being okay with that. And, and just have the, the will and the ability to be able to be like it got this really what I dark, need. Angie. Mm -hmm. it got so dark that I couldn't see and I was afraid because so the first time the person who everybody thinks is so strong was not and I was scared for myself mm -hmm. I don't think I would ever harm myself but sui suicidal ideation is real mm -hmm. it's real I get it I, I don't have those thoughts I haven't I don't know in my life I'm sure I have period but but I understand it's real I understand how, I understand. Especially now where things, you see people who are strong, who you deem to be strong or happy. Happy. Yeah, but they're doing the same thing you said you do. You show up in a room, you smile, you hug people, you give them love. That has nothing to do with what's going on inside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thank God. I'm, I'm, as somebody who cares about you, I'm grateful that you have the will and the, <laughs> um, and the care for yourself to even... Make that, yeah. make that shift. Make yeah. that change. I'm proud of myself. Mm -hmm. I feel very proud to be able to look in the camera and say, I'm not that strong. Like, mm -hmm. I'm fighting for my joy. Every day is a fight. Every day is a... F I feel like I'm fighting for my life, mm -hmm. you know? Because I feel like so many people look up and they're counting on me. You know what I mean? I don't feel like no hero. It's okay, baby. I'm gonna take a second. I'm not a fucking hero. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not. I'm not perfect. I'm somebody who I'm a human. I'm flawed. I'm trying to figure this thing out every day, and um, it just for me right now, it just seems like it's getting harder and harder. But is it? Is it? Is it my perception? Is it what I'm putting on it? Is it? You know, when you get into a dark place, you go, you can compound yourself with the darkness. You mm -hmm. know, and it's all about your thoughts. And it's like, am I doing this to myself? Is this happening in real time? I just, I'm finally to a place in my life where I just need to say, it's like, oh, whoa, everybody stop. Thank I gotta God. Step off. Thank God you can do You know that. what I mean? Yeah, thank God. The Hidden Figures star has also shared many more photos on her Instagram story, including shots of her practicing meditation and mindfulness during her Bali trip. Henson opened up about not feeling purely happy in a long time on the Angie Martinez IRL podcast, which prompted her decision to take the extended solo trip. I thought I was happy, but the things that I thought, I'm not going to get emotional. I don't want to. The things that I thought was making me happy, they don't. They don't cut it anymore, she explained to the host, adding, so I'm in a place where, what does that look like? Question mark. And I'm kind of spinning because I don't know. She revealed her travel plans, explaining, I'm about to go to Bali for a month by myself. It's my own spiritual journey. I got to find my happiness, she noted, adding, and it's not in my friends. It's not in my mama. It's in me. Y'all got any kind of boo thing, some kind of... I honestly don't. You got like somebody. You got another lunch friend, somebody. Where is he? I don't think he's in America. I keep saying that. Cause all the men have been ran through. Mm -hmm, that's true. All the 
<laughs> Straight up and down. No, I'm serious. It's really a shortage. I say what I say. <laughs> I'm, I'm dating. No, no. I'm, you know, you know, know who I'm dating? Yourself. Right. I really am. No, I be going on dates with myself, y'all. It's I take my, myself to dinner. It's powerful. It's powerful. I, I take, <laughs> anyway, that's too much information, but yeah. <laughs> we get you. I am dating myself. When it comes to my opinion regarding Taraji, a lot of people are trying to force on her that it's because she doesn't have a man. It's because she's not married. Again, relying on external things to make herself feel happy and at peace on the inside. If I was a woman, I wouldn't want to have a child either. Why would I want to have a child? I don't need to have a child. I don't need to have a man. I don't need to play, pr pretend that I'm in love. I don't need to pretend that I want to be a mother. I don't need to stay at home and play giggle giggle with a little child who's just another slave in the system. I don't, I don't have to do any of this shit. Why should I do that? Why should I waste my resources doing this when I can, there's other games that are much more fun that are available for me to play? Why? And don't tell me I will find fulfillment, because my mother didn't find fulfillment. My grandmother didn't find fulfillment. And that's why I'm the byproduct of their lack of fulfillment. So I am, as, I'm talking as a woman, right? <laughs> I'm the byproduct of my mom, my grandmother, and all these lineages of women that came before me. And I'm the byproduct of their discontent. And then you tell me I should do the same thing as they did. Well, quite clearly it didn't work out. So I should do this. What's the point? How's that going to fulfill me? And the only reason I did that before, or a couple of generations ago, is because the zoo required me, through its ordained religious priests and its, its, in its science of the time, which is, was religion, that imposes us to do that and gave us, this is what you are as a woman, you're supposed to give birth, and you as a man are supposed to go work in the field like a donkey. This was ordered by the zookeepers in order for us to create more slaves so that we can build the zoo and make the zoo structure increase and grow and grow and grow. So I didn't really want to have a child. I was obliged to have a child. It was what I did because there's nothing else to do. And that was what was told to me to do. Even though it may match my biology, I didn't necessarily want to have a child. What for? What's in it for me? And that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to my platform, nothing in life is guaranteed. You can get married, you can have kids and be miserable as hell. I have seen so many people get divorced after the pandemic because they realized how unhappy they were in their marriage. Also, when it comes to TikTok, mommy TikTok, there are so many women on there every day complaining about how they wish they never would have had kids. Just because I've wanted to be a mother my whole life does not mean that I want motherhood to be my whole life. Hear me out. This thought came to me earlier today when I was sitting with my five month old. My whole life I wanted a baby and I thought if I could just get a baby, everything would fall into place and I would be the happiest I'd ever been and nothing else would matter. Not only is that not true and I'm extremely overwhelmed, tired and all the things, but it's not fulfilling me in the way that I thought it would. And I feel fucking awful saying that. I feel disgusting saying that. Because I'm a person that thought, literally that thought my life would make sense when I had babies. But I'm not just supposed to do one thing 24-7. I thought I wouldn't ever want to go back to work. I want to go back to work. I want to feel like I have some semblance of who I was before I had this baby. Don't get me wrong, this baby has given me so much joy. And I do feel like it was part of my life's roles to become a mother. But... I don't want to only be a mom. No one is meant to be one thing 24 seven. We have lots of different roles that we take on. I like to think of us as a pie, okay? And I have my, uh, I like to work out. I like to play guitar. I like to um, go to movies by myself. I like to uh, learn about psychology. I have a master's degree in social work. I like to, I loved my internship. And now I'm also a mother. And what being a mother does for me and did for me and for a lot of women is it, consumes the pie. Your pie is now only you as a mom. And I don't want my old pie to be me as a mom. I'm multifaceted, bitch. Like I need different pieces of pie. I ain't just gonna be one plain pie, you know? I, I just need to get it out there because I feel like shit for even saying that motherhood's not enough, but it is enough if it's just a part of me. It's not enough if it's all of me. I need me. Motherhood fucking sucks and I hate it.
Wow, so much rage you must be thinking. She fucking hates it, that poor kid. I still hate it. It's been fucking months. It still sucks. I don't feel like I need to justify um, that I love him. That's obvious. I think people are smart enough to know that. And if you're not, then maybe don't watch my content. It's obviously not for you. <laughs> but I do think I need to come back and restate that I did make that video. We were fresh in the trenches. We are now what? He's almost five months old and it still sucks. I still hate it. Motherhood isn't for everyone. And don't get me wrong, I'm amazing at it. I don't know how. I didn't think I would be. I'm fucking fantastic at it. Do I like it? No. No. But I'm good at it. I just wanted to quickly make a video for the people that are jumping in the comments and that are like, oh shit, this is why I didn't want to have kids. These are my exact fears, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, it's kind of unavoidable, right? Parenthood tests your every single limit and people are not kidding when they say that. It is fucking true. They're also not kidding when they say, you don't know until you have them. You don't, I fucking didn't. I certainly didn't. But it does, you know what? No, it doesn't get easier. It does feel more familiar. You kind of roll with the punches more. At the start, yeah, at the start when he was freaking out because he wanted things I didn't know what they were. Of course it's hard, I don't know what the fuck he wants. I don't speak bleh. But, you know, it's been a couple of months and it kind of makes more sense. And there are still days where I sit in his room in the dark, furious that he's not sleeping and wishing I was dead. There are still days that are fucking hard where I gotta call my husband and be like, you come on right now and take care of your demon son. He really doesn't like that voice. <laughs> it makes more sense now. So if you've seen that video and you're like, well, now I'm not having kids. I mean, good for you. Save your money and you sleep. By all means, do that. You just, you, you do it if you want to and you don't if you don't. Then you have single people who are unhappy. You have people who don't have kids who feel like they should have had kids but chose not to that are unhappy. You have people who are broke that are unhappy. You have people who have money that are unhappy. You have people who can hop on jets and go anywhere in the world, yet they are still unhappy. The money does not bring happiness. The money can take care of a lot. Uh, the money can handle certain things. Does it bring uh, a sense of self-worth? No. Does it bring a sense of uh, self-satisfaction? No. In fact, it's easy to feel a sense of, of letdown. You get money, and you feel like you're going to buy Dirty all these baby, different things. Won't you me buy the a whole bunch of stuff, but at the end of the day, you still going to be unhappy. That's what people don't understand, you feel me? So... I had to find a different type of uh, inspiration and, and something to live for rather than just how much money I make. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't preach this same type of thing to the homie in the hood because he ain't got nothing. You know, until he get it, he'll understand what I'm talking about. But from the stamp, how can I explain it is, it's always been the root of all evil. People forget that, you know, you can be able to support yourself and your family, things like that, but it brings issues. And one thing that I have learned from the... Taraji episode with Angie Martinez is the fact that she understands that it's something that she has to find within herself and she understands that it's not going to be the external things that's going to make her find that happiness within herself or that peace within herself. A lot of people are just going through the motions. A lot of people are going through the motions miserable as hell. And then they want to project their fears onto others as if, if you would just do this or if you would just do that, that would make you happy. But at the end of the day, it takes you going within to truly find your happiness. And that is what Taraji is doing. And I'm so happy for her. I'm so happy that she decided to go within to find her happiness. And she came to the conclusion that everything that she thought would make herself happy, everything that she believed in when it came to being happy and being at peace, she realized that it wasn't it, that it was not it. And so now she's out here trying to find it and she's going deep within herself to find that. And instead of people coming to the realization that that's the spiritual journey that she is currently on, they want to sit back and project their shortcomings, their mistakes, things that they wish they would have done onto her. 
but this journey, it's all about self. And I hope you guys are coming to that realization. You know, Taraji, she had a horrible dating life. She has horrible romantic experiences with men. And I really think this journey is really about self. Mary J. Blodge is also coming to that realization. She's currently in this healing phase where she's loving on herself. She's dating herself. She just got out of a marriage that she didn't think she was going to make it out of. And so she's just in this space where she's just grateful. She's optimistic and she's just really loving the space that she's in. This is the year of the seven. The year of the seven is it's all about spirituality. It's all about having a connection with the most high. And a lot of people are going to be taking these solo trips, these solo journeys. They're really going to start turning within. And Taraji, she's just ahead of everybody else. She's just ahead of that group of people that haven't came to that realization yet. Like they still going through the motions and them going through the motions, playing it safe is keeping them miserable instead of actually taking a step out on faith and doing what they feel pulled and called to do within self. So I am happy for Taraji and I hope she finds what she's looking for. I know she will find what she's looking for. And I know at the end of this darkness that she's currently in, there is light and she will be happy. She will find her peace. And I'm really, really excited for her. So I'm hoping to get an update on where she is after her solo trip to Bali. And I'm hoping she shares just some pieces, not all of it, but just some pieces of the trip that really enlightened her and just where she is today. But that's all that I have regarding this video, you guys. I would love your thoughts and your opinions down below in the comment section. If you're new here, please subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. I upload Monday through Thursday. Today is a Friday and I am uploading on Friday because I was sick. So the schedule was a little messed up this week, but next week we will be back on schedule Monday through Thursday. So again, please give the video a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in my next one.